We will now show you how the activities in Teen Topics are based on this methodology. This will help you to use the series effectively. The first two pages of every unit are the unit opener. These pages contain the unit purpose, the social practices that students will take part in, and the language functions that they will practice throughout the unit. They also list the topics and lessons into which the unit is divided. Notice that each topic is broken into three lessons, A, B, and C. Lessons cover all the language contents indicated in the official program and offer a balanced variety of activities in terms of text types, language skills, and patterns of interaction. Lessons also have clear and detailed instructions for every activity. Lesson A is always two pages long and usually follows the entire cycle of experiential learning. It begins with a pre-reading or pre-listening activity. The aim of this activity is to activate students' previous knowledge, or schemata, about a given topic. Next, there is a text, which can be oral or written, followed by exercises that focus on the interpretation of that text. Remember that this is the stage of concrete experience, where students see the language in context and where they have to make sense of the text as a whole. Students may find some text challenging. There may be a number of words that they don't understand. It is important that you help them realize that they can understand the sense of a text, even if they don't know all the words. Explain that they can often work out the meaning of words by paying attention to context and what they already know about the subject. The next part of the lesson is called Reflect on Language. This is the stage when we ask students to reflect on their experience of the text. This means looking back at the text and focusing on a specific language item. By directing students' attention to an aspect of the language, we help them observe the language item first. Then, through questions that have students think about or reflect on the language point, we guide students towards conceptualizing how that aspect of language works. It is important to say that the teacher's role at this stage is mainly that of a facilitator. This means that the teacher will not explain how language works, but will help students work that out for themselves. Remember, it is students who need to do the reflection and the thinking. Your role is to support them in that process and guide them when necessary. The final activities in the lesson are aimed at getting students to practice or experiment with what they have learned. Depending on the language function being learned in the lesson, practice is oral, written, or a mixture of both. Practice exercises also move from controlled to freer activities. In controlled exercises, students' production is limited to individual words or sentences based on a structured model. Freer practice exercises allow students to personalize information and produce texts rather than words or phrases. In some lessons, you will find pair work activities that refer students to the pair work section at the back of the book. These are semi-controlled information gap activities that provide a situation in which students will use the language in context and in a meaningful, communicative way. Lessons B and C are each a page long. They focus on skills development, that is, reading, listening, speaking, and writing. These lessons sometimes, but not always, include reflect on language exercises. The teacher's guide is an essential tool for you to make the most of teen topics. Every lesson in the student's book is reproduced in the teacher's guide and the answers to all the activities are provided. At the beginning of each lesson A in the teacher's guide, you will find content boxes. These provide all the elements you need in order to plan your lesson and establish your class objectives. They also indicate any extra materials you will need so that you can prepare them in advance. Comencemos provides simple and creative ways of starting the lesson. These are warm-up activities that will both focus your students' attention and introduce the topic of the lesson. 
Immediately after comencemos, the teacher's guide describes the procedure you need to follow in order to conduct activities related to the text. That is, the doing stage of the experiential learning cycle. These instructions also tell you what materials you will need and the suggested pattern of interaction for each activity. The Reflect on Language box gives step-by-step -step instructions for this stage of the lesson and also provides a further explanation of how the language works so that you can better support learners. Remember that this stage comprises both the noticing and the learning stages of the experiential learning cycle. After the Reflect on Language section, you will find detailed instructions on how to handle the practice activities that correspond to the using stage of the experiential learning cycle. Finally, Para Concluir presents practical ideas for you to close your lesson in an enjoyable way. At the back of the teacher's guide, you will find five exams, one for each unit. These exams focus on the main language aspects of each unit. They will therefore help you to measure students' progress and identify students' difficulties in order to plan remedial work. The correct answers to the exams are also provided in the teacher's guide.